Welcome, first contention fans. This week, week four NFL recap. We got a whole lot in store for you. We got the disappointment of the week, the surprise of the week, and the player of the week. It's first contention. Let's get this party started. Coverage tight, spotlight on tomorrow. Who you with? Trust, you'll be delighted that you followed. At first contention, the invention. We debate sports, of course we should mention. What's that? We cover games, we don't play suspensions. We 100, so if your star's missing, we let you know your squad surely gone fishing. We never fish though, no, not our motto. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. First contention. Hey, what's up, first contention fans? Welcome back. It is football season. Week four is officially down in the NFL. It's in the books. We got, as usual, your favorite. Well, I can't pick a favorite. Can't say that you have a favorite, but your favorite three debaters. From all over the country, Mr. Ty Wilsosina, what's up? Salutations. Mr. Marvin Banks. Hola, seniors and senoritas. And my man in Maryland, Mr. Stephen Davis. What's going on, everybody? Strive high every day. Let's go. All right, we got a whole lot of football to talk about, so let's jump right into it. Week four in the NFL is down. We got Atlanta's 4-0, the Texans are 4-0, Cardinals 4-0, Cleveland's 4-0, 49ers spank the Jets 34-0. Tim Tebow does not walk on water any longer. We're going to jump right into it. This past week, what was uh, you guys, we'll start with the disappointment. What was the disappointment of the week for you? We'll kick things off with you, Mr. Banks. Well, I guess the disappointment of the week, I would have to say, let's go down south to the D. Let's go down to Dallas. The disappointment of the week for me has to be the Cowboys and the disappointing performance that they put on on Monday night. Um, Tony Romo threw five picks, making Charles Tillman look like an all-pro corner out there, looking like a young prime time, taking it back to the house. Um, Dallas has got smacked twice already, once by... Mm -hmm. The Bears, and also by the Seahawks. This is a cause for concern for the team with the star on the helmet. So the disappointment of the week, down there in the D. Um, the Bears spanking them, that's not a disappointment. That's expected. Moving right along, Ty, what was your disappointment of the week? All right, we're going to go from big D to up north to another D. We're going to Detroit. We're talking about a team that lost, even though their defense did not give up a single Touchdown. The Lions become the first team in NFL history to allow a kick return and a punt return in back-to-back -back weeks. This is unbelievable. They lose to the Vikings 20-13. to Get this. The Vikings hadn't beaten a divisional opponent since 2010, and you lose to them in this fashion. Just disappointing. You're a playoff team. You're supposed to win. Beat the team you're supposed to beat. They're imposters, and they are returning to true form. Lions, disappointing. Oh, P.U. Ugh. Stinking it up, stinking it up. Steve, what was your disappointment of the week? Man, okay, so my disappointment of the week may not necessarily be something that we expect because, you know, we didn't really expect too much from them in the beginning. But I'm going to have to say the New York Jets, just because what they stand for and all the stuff that they talk about the offseason, about what they're going to do with Tim Tebow, Rex Ryan saying this is the best team he's ever had. Okay, Daryl Reeves goes down. Then San Antonio Holmes goes down, just throws the ball away, gives San, uh, San Francisco the ball, makes them score, you know. Then they go pick up some guy after he goes down, pick up some guy named Jason Hill. Who is Jason Hill? I don't know. But they had T.O. out there. They had Plexico out there. They had Ocho out there. What are the Jets doing? I'm sick of them. What is going on in New York? The disappointment of the week, the Jets. Very disappointing indeed. And you are right. There are some trade rumors swirl, swirling around the league about Ocho Cinco possibly going to touch the hem of T Tim Tebow's garment to be forgiven of all of his sins. We'll have to wait and see exactly what happens. Moving right along. The best part, most exciting part of the week. What was your favorite, or wait, the biggest surprise of the week, shall I say? Not most exciting. The biggest surprise. 
Mr. Banks, what was the surprise of the week for you? Well, I think someone said in the first NFL episode that Arizona was the best team in the NFC West. And after the first quarter period, Arizona is the best team in the NFC West. So the biggest surprise to me is Arizona. Kevin Cobb, who said a two-quarterback system can't work with John Skelton and Kevin Cobb? It's one <laughs> I would have to definitely say the Arizona Cardinals. Like I said, don't want to toot my own horn, toot toot, but I did pick Arizona. So, so let's why are you through. surprised? Anyway, move right along. <laughs> Steve, what was your surprise of the week? Okay, my surprise of the week has to be the Minnesota Vikings. They go down to Detroit and they get a win basically off of special teams. You got Percy Harvey killing it. Then you got my boy, my old teammate, Marcus Sherrill's 77-yard uh, return for a touchdown. He's doing it big. The defense is stepping up. AP is looking like his old self all day. He's rubbling, tumbling, scoring touchdowns. You got Kristen Ponder. Not an interception. This guy is looking like an all-pro so far. So I'm surprised. Minnesota 3-1, and one, leading the division? What? Let's not jump to hasty conclusions. <laughs> That's a, it's an asterisk next to them leading the division there, by the way, too. Uh, all right, Ty, what was your surprise of the week? Yeah, let's not jump the gun. You know, Ponder, that defense isn't special, none special, and they are not leading the division. They are tied in the division. My surprise of the week, we're going down to Houston. Um, I'm actually, uh, I don't know if they're playing Tennessee or Houston, but this, this might be the first time our surprise was on a losing team. My surprise is Chris Johnson. He cracked 100 yards. He ran yes. for 141 yards. He averaged 5.6 yards a clip. And while he lost, yeah. it's, this is great for Chris Johnson's psyche to let him know that he still has it against the Texans, which is probably was rated the top two defenses going into week four. So, I mean, this is great for Chris Johnson. I'm, I'm happy to see him crack 100. Good for him. And the Texans are 4-0, and oh, so big ups to them indeed. Big ups. Moving right along, the player of the week. Ty, you get to go first this time. Who was your NFL player of the week? 30 seconds. Let's hear why. Well, don't mind if I do. Thank you, Josh. Uh, we're not going to talk about a player. I'm going to go with a whole unit. That's right. We're talking about the defense that was in Big D, but the real Big D belonged to the monsters of the midway, the Bears. What's that banner thing on the Cowboys? Peanut Tillman, 25-yard return. Major Wright, two picks. DJ Moore, another pick. Lance Bridge, 74-yard return. You never thought Lance Bridge could move like that. But we're talking about the best 4-3 outside linebacker in the game. Stop, Bears. You thought they were old, but they're experienced. These, these guys look like the Ravens. Now they score more than they used to before. Amazing. Amazing performance in prime time. The house that Dion built. <laughs> okay. Interesting. <laughs> Steve, what are your thoughts? Who was your player of the week? <laughs> All right. So my heart was telling me to say, Tom Brady in New England Patriots offense scoring 52 points. But I'm going to surprise you guys because this guy was the player of the week for me, and maybe the disappointment for everybody else. And it's Tony Romo. Five interceptions. <laughs> oh my God, I won my fantasy game just because this guy had the worst game ever. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person that won because he probably only scored like five points. His receivers didn't get that much points. And I won the game, so I'm just going to give him props for being so horrible and helping me win my game. I'm not sure I've heard anyone pick their player of the week the actual worst player of the week. <laughs> That's a new one, but hey, whatever floats your boat, whatever works. Marvin, who was your player of the week? Before I announce my player of the week, let's set some things straight. The Monsters of the Midway would never be better than the 2000 Ravens, first and foremost. But... To silence the critics, I am bipartisan, and my player of the week is the bipolar Brandon Marshall. Once again, he won my fantasy football <laughs> team because I was down by 20, and, and with that last touchdown, he put me up by three points, giving me the victory. So, Brandon Marshall, kudos to you. Jay Cutler, thank you for actually finding him and throwing him a touchdown pass. So, uh, it's a clean sweep. Uh, with the Bears um, this week, wow. so I would have to say 
Brandon Marshall is the player of the week. I give you a half-hearted salute. Man, you better get that. Half-hearted salute. You see what fantasy football does? It even brings Marv to like the Bears. Like, come on. Wait a second. Let's 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 put the things no, in perspective. No, 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 there's no, no, personal go ahead, and there's Marv business. Go ahead, Josh. Go ahead. There's personal and there's business. I never said I liked it, the Bears. This was a business decision. <laughs> and let's okay. clearly okay. something else straight. The eighty five okay. Bears defense was better than the two thousand Ravens defense. All right. And that's all we got for this show. We got no bonus, but we'll be back to you next week. We got a whole lot of games coming up Sunday. We got Green Bay versus Indianapolis. After coming off of a bye, we're going to see what Mr. <laughs> Andrew Luck gets to come back and do. Will he succeed? Will he fail? You have to wait and see. We'll see you next time on First Contention. That's USA versus Angola. <laughs> Ride with first contention, that's full throttle in. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. First contention. We sport, we sport on deals, on court, on court, on fields. The victors, the vengeance, the legends, latest invention. Game face grit, like born for playoffs. Say it all in small time, like payoffs.